I'd like to introduce Fernando Contreras and Alejandro Caballero, who will be speaking about IPv6 success case, ColombianGov.co, and advance and advances in deployment. Welcome, Fernando and Alejandro. Thank you very much. First of all, we'd like to thank LACNIC for the invitation to participate in this very important event for the region, for Latin American and Caribbean countries. And on behalf of the government, we would like to make a presentation on a success IPv6 case. I'm Eliazar Alvarez. I'm Eliazar Alvarez. I am in charge of the education institution. I'm the director of the Digital Academy, Macarena from Santa Marta. We are the agency that has more than 2,400 students. Thank you very much. And we have been benefited by these tutorials because we have figured out a way of continuing the work entrusted to us by the professors. We'd like to thank the government and MITIC for this excellent tool. Thank you very much for the strategy. I'd like to thank the Ministry and of the ICTs for the support throughout the pandemic. Thank you very much for the Gov Code Territorial. Thank you, Minister, for your collaboration. I'd like to thank the Ministry of Technology IT and communications and the portal gov.co territorial. Good morning. I wanted you to watch this video, which are some of the testimonials thanking for a technological solution provided by the government of Colombia and the Ministry of Technology of Colonia. And we're reaching out to all the different areas of Colombia, the public entities. The objective is to reach all the Colombians with technological services in order to improve the quality of life and order to bring about a digital transformation of the entities as well as a cultural transformation of Colombians. GovCo Territorial has the objective of having an open government so that Colombians are informed of what the public administration does. So that is our overall objective with this technological solution. So what do we do? We try to make the state entities access and use effectively and uh, take over the technologies. For example, in the case of IPv6, this is something we are working on. We incorporated new features and options for the public administration throughout the country. And also, the technologies provided can serve as a channel to inform and communicate as well as interact with the public administration. So that is our objective. We are focused on reaching out to the citizens through the territorial entities, this with services and this solution, which is Gov Code Territorial, has a very high availability. We have monitoring 
services, the new versions we have uh, through cooperation efforts we do with the citizens, all the decisions we take are based on information obtained from citizen particip uh, participation, sorry, participation. We build capacities. We have more than 10,000 administrators throughout the country, and we're evolving through this technological solution. This solution has been in place for more than 10 years. Ever since the government issued it, we are unique in Latin America. We have received an award from the CAF Bank, and every year we wish we try to produce a new version of this technological solution with the participation of the different entities and the citizens. In 2021, we have Gov Co Territorial 4.0. This includes digital procedures, and we started implementing IPv6. The idea is to broadcast this throughout the country. And you might ask yourselves how far we have reached. We have already reached 8,224 territorial entities. All the dots you see are entities, are public entities that have this technological solution. About 90% of the mayors have these, the local governments, different institutions, educa educational uh, facilities, 4,792 health sector entities. We are present in all the municipalities throughout the country. We provide support, administration, security, capacity building. And at the end of 2021, we added IPv6. We incorporated it into the solution. This has had a very high impact, as I said. During the pandemic, all the entities had, had their website in order to respond to the citizens who had to remain at home and couldn't go out. So we strengthened the solution. We now have more than 8 million visits every month, an average of 250,000 monthly publications of all the public entities and citizen participation. For example, requests and claims. Initially, we had about two or 3,000 a year, and today we have more than 200,000 every month. This is citizen participation. So citizens have also, have also responded. One of the important things is that we have an economy of scale. This service is very cheap for the state and the entities. It is cheap for the entities because the service we provide costs zero pesos. They don't have to pay for this. They can adapt to this service if they request it today. Within eight hours, they receive this service. So this is, well, um, this is very mature. And the entities are also satisfied with us. In the case of IPv6, all the technological partners throughout the country have to comply with the IPv6 protocol. This is for infrastructure and for applications. Last year, we managed to implement 3,432 entities with different domains, and all these adopted this IPv6 protocol. So we have uh, um, governors and um, municipalities that have adopted this. And as at March last year, we now added 4,792, amounting to a total of 8,224 
entities that have IPv6 as a protocol. The issue of the economy of scale, you won't believe it, but so that an entity that provides all these services costs 14 US dollars a month. It's 50,000 pesos every month. And they receive the following services, the website technical support, technical administration, security, hosting, backup, training, IPv6. This costs $168 a year, which is about 600,000 Colombian pesos. So this also implies a social task through which we provide services to the entire Colombian population. We have more than 40 million Colombians that can have access to our services. And we're always working, trying to deliver the best services possible, complying with the role of a state. And you might ask yourselves how we managed to implement IPv6. We worked for a full year, and in, Mr. Contreras will tell you how we managed to achieve this success story. The CAF is looking at this. We want to be an example in Latin America so that other countries can also adopt this and use this technology as a service applied to all the citizens, uh, available to all citizens in the country. Thank you. In the second part of the presentation, we're going to explain what this consisted in from the technical standpoint to implement GovCo territorial and also the implementation of IPv6. This is the deployment diagram of the solution. We have to clarify that all these services are working in Microsoft's public cloud. The technical infrastructure has a complete solution from the public cloud containing a WAF system with four clusters. This WAF system in each of the clusters provides an IPv4 addressing and IPv6 addressing simultaneously the work in dual stack. We're using only the slash 24 prefixes because this is a web-based solution. The application supports about 8,300 domains throughout the country. Each cluster has an IPv4 and IPv6 addressing. But curiously enough, we only need one IPv6 address for each cluster. In other words, if we look at cluster number one on the left side of the screen, we see that we have there 1,000 organizations, which are municipalities and local governments, which deliver only one IPv6 address. We know the benefits of IPv6 addressing because of the dimensions we have today. But we have designed this platform in such a way that we are interested in generating traffic from those thousand institutions through IP addresses in these clusters. In cluster two, we have the assemblies and uh, the consultancies. In three, it's uh, the health sector, for instance, and public sectors. And in cluster three, four, we, it's where we have more domains because we have about 5,300 domains connected there. And the new cycles that uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll receive uh, from now on, they are giving their addresses. Uh, if we look at cluster one, we are going out with uh, uh, IPv6 and cluster four with 138. 
Um, if we look at these name resolutions, a domain uh, um, solution in IPv6, we see that, for instance, to your left, you see an example of uh, uh, Solidar Atlantico, that's a municipality that is going through IPv6 through cluster one, but also we could ha also have the Caloto Council in El Cauca, where the IPv6 and IPv4 addressing will be come out through cluster four. And uh, so we will, and this is how we have solved uh, the IPv6. In the previous um, uh, chart, I forgot to tell you that we have DNS uh, uh, services that uh, solve the domain uh, issues uh, to your right, and they can simultaneously solve with a register and the domain, the DNS for each of the sites that are connected. And finally, in a special VLAN, we have a number of servers that behave as nodes to um, enable us not just to have a resolution solution of uh, the name, uh, but also traffic to IPv6. We have a firewall solution supported by Microsoft that makes the solution possible. As to our deployment of IPv6 from the point of view of the public entities in the country, they subscribe to a government strategy where we establish a methodology for the adoption of IPv6 in three phases, planning, implementation, and uh, um, functionality tests and uh, performance. So at this um, uh, is uh, uh, classified based on um, standards. Uh, Resolutions 2710 of 2017 and 1126 from 2021 that have include technical guidelines for all government agencies, uh, either national scale or territorial scale, can implement IPv6 um, successfully. And we also have a monitoring platform where we uh, make all the entities in the country to report how they are doing. And so that gives us a heat map of IPv6. And we are now disseminating a circular letter by the ICT minister where we are going to request the uh, um, uh, national agencies to accelerate IPv6 adoption. Here you have the figures of IPv6 um, by departments in the countries as per the reports of the public entities. Of course, uh, the greatest uh, is in the uh, number is in um, the capital of the country, but the rest of the departments are starting to report. This is a very hard task, and we still have a lot of work to do. This is then Okay, this is uh, the distribution that we have in our country. Well, this is what we wanted to tell you in this forum, This to share it with you. But I especially want to thank the work of Alejandro Acosta of LACNIC, who has collaborated with us and who's given us recommendations especially for the implementation of uh, the IPv6 protocol. Thank you. Thank you both for your presentations. In this case, we have a question in the Q&A. It's in Portuguese, so I'm going to read it. It's by Henry Godoy. So, so the 
question of Henry says as follows. Congratulations for the initiative and uh, for the way you deployed IPv6. I'm very interested in knowing what problems you run into and the challenges that you found during your work. Could you give us some examples? Oh, could you could you ask it again, please? Well, it says, congratulations for the implementation of IPv6. I have to read it verbatim. But Henry Godoy says the following. Congratulations for the initiative and for the evolution of the deployment of IPv6. I'm very interested in knowing what are the challenges and problems that you run into while you were doing that? Could you give us some examples, please? Well, as we, as work was in progress, as we were developing this, we did run into some problems. Um, they're not so much focused on uh, the technical part because we especially had problems uh, to for the configuration of the WAF uh, system because at the beginning it was rather hard to configure it until we managed to have a successful configuration in the WAF system. But the key thing is to manage to succeed in, in having all the territories to adopt uh, the uh, adoption the adoption of IPv6. There are many entities that uh, are lagging behind. They may think that this is expensive, but Alejandro very clearly said that this doesn't cost anything, cost zero. But unfortunately, some entities have not uh, adopted it. Alejandro, could you complement this? Yes. Yes, and another problem that we have is this is an atypical case. There are Microsoft solutions that can solve one, two, up to 10 or up to 100 domains, but we had over 8,000 domains at the beginning the problem was to see which was the solution that was uh, would be the best for us to solve the name of all the domains so that tra IPv6 traffic could flow. I think that that was the main uh, problem that we had, and that was why we considered that WAF was uh, so useful, because it's the solution that Fernando explained, and it ended up being the most effective and can give us a solution for all the entities to, uh, to, to help us solve the protocol problems. Thank you for your answer. We have a question in the room and others in the Q&A. Let's see the one here in the room. Hello. I'm Sergio Rojas and I'm part of the internet community. I know your project and I've known it for some for a long time and I, I'm aware of how hard you've worked. So congratulations. As to what Alejandro said, well, you should be seen as a, a role model for Latin America. You are already an example for Latin America. That's one thing. On the other, in the uh, uh, one of the last pres uh, slides, you showed the statistics of the various points that you declared that we're already implementing IPv6. I always use it also when I have interview when 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 I when I'm uh, I have meetings with people of the uh, community. I give examples of how IPv6 was deployed in uh, government. I understand that you post uh, public documents in the websites. Now, I'd like to know whether you have any statistics of IPv6 traffic, because when giving it to the Ministry of ICTs, very often you can say, well, how can we know whether that network has traffic or not? So my question is, 
do you have any public reports on the, uh, the IPv6 traffic generated by those points? Well, from the point of view of the deployment of IPv6 in Colombia, especially with the uh, government entities, we are not handling traffic uh, with uh, the statistics offered by Google or LACNIC as such. However, we do mention figures in the sense of the number of entities that are currently working in phase one, phase two, phase three or uh, of IPv6. So the government draws those uh, figures, but, uh, but not uh, and produces these figures, and but not at an IP level as uh, offered by LACNIC or Google. However, Alejandro uh, uses figures that he, he can tell you about? Well, that's an interesting question because I had asked Fernando because the issue of traffic, as we are working with over 8,000 domains, we have an average of 8 million visits a month and over 300,000 uh, posts and a lot of uh, citizens, uh, but we have uh, four IPv6 uh, uh, addresses uh, for 8,300 uh, entities, so it would be good to see how we can solve the, the statistics of Colombia. Fernando has 300 and something, but we have 8,300 more that are missing. That is, the minister, the ministry published uh, that uh, for the public entities to adopt IPv6, and we did our work so that the 8,000 could uh, start using uh, th this uh, IPv6 protocol. Thank you. We have several questions in the Q&A. Let's go to uh, the uh, Zoom before going to the microphone. Alejandro Cruz says, hello, excellent deployment of IPv6. I'm Alejandro Cruz from UNAM in Mexico. As to the platform for monitoring IPv6, could you tell us how it works? How, how does what work, sorry? Alejandro asks, how how does the platform for IPv6 monitoring works? Well, the monitoring platform was designed at the Ministry of ICTs about four years ago. It's quite a simple tool that we developed for both national and territorial entities could uh, report it. Uh, they can they they send us a text. They don't even have to post any files, but that giving us an update of the stages they're going through, planning, implementation, and performance test. So we did it with the idea of knowing the degree of commitment of the entities vis-a-vis uh, -vis IPv6. And some of the statistics that I showed at the end of the presentation, well, that reflects the final work uh, with that platform. Thank you. Now we have another participant asking in the room. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for the presentation. I'm uh, Julie Che of the Ministry of uh, the Environment in Uruguay. What is the technology that you use to implement WAF? It's a solution. It's a Microsoft solution. These are uh, the Microsoft's firewalls. Thank you. We have more questions in the Q&A panel. This one is by uh, Humberto Muñoz Ortiz. He says, excellent presentation. What is the total percentage of IPv6 implementation throughout the national territory? We can say that although we have a success story that we have explained today, we were aware that there is still a high degree of greater IPv6 deployment. We have about 20% of entities throughout the country that still 
that already adopted IPv6. But in fact, we still need to make 80% of entities to join these initiatives. We cannot say, well, like LACNIC does, saying, well, according to LACNIC's latest report, we are at about 20% uh, traffic generation. But regarding what the government does, the government is not only Colombia. Colombia is not only the government. There are also private entities that contribute to this. So from the standpoint of the government, the entities still have to have a greater commitment and to let us know what their status is. So that is what I can tell you at this moment. There is one more question here in the room. Yes, please. Good morning. I'm William Galceran. I'm Homtecom Comunicaciones. I'd like to ask you a very specific question on this topic because there are some customers that are already requesting IPv6, particularly regarding municipalities and educational institutes. So my question is the following. With IPv6 only, these organizations, can they implement your solutions or do they need dual stack to be able to operate? The GovCo territorial is an on-demand service. If an entity wishes to join us, they can do so. We have several services channel. Where did you tell me you were from? What municipality? The requests we have received are from the Department of Bolivar in the area of Santa Rosa. Yes, they can write to support CCC .gov.co, and they submit the request. We validate that the entity does not have a double domain, and if so, they should contact the ministry. We sub process the request, and within eight hours, they have the website with all the services. And like Fernando was saying, the cluster we have for the solutions, cluster number four, includes the new domains. So once we deliver the website to the entity, they are already have IPv6 version. That is immediate. There's no problem. The state is willing to respond to all the entities that wish to be with us. And the only thing that they have to do is to really register because the ministry, each entity is responsible for the information they publish. And welcome. We are looking forward to having them. Let me add on to that answer of Alejandro's. Let me tell you that Resolution 2710 of 2017 issued by Mintic allows to establish guidelines for adopting IPv6 protocol and states that all ICT services generated in the country, including procurement of technology, have to have native IPv6 support but can continue working on dual stack because the services have to continue operating normally. Thank you. Thank you to both of you. And for time constraints, we're going to ask the last two questions we have in the Q&A. One is from Fernando Fedriani. I would like to ask whether you have also enabled IPv6 support for the email servers, and if so, have you encountered any problems when sending or receiving messages? Well, we should clarify initially that the guideline provided by the government for IPv6 adoption is at general level, not only for servers or email servers, but for all the IT infrastructures that the entities have. Let me remind you that the focus not only on the public entities, 
private entities are autonomous and can decide whether they adopt IPv6 or not. But what we are promoting is the initiative for them to adopt IPv6. Therefore, if there are email servers that are working in public entities, then they should work at least in dual stack modality without any issues at all. Thank you very much. Now we have the last question. It says, well, greetings from Ecuador by Elias Mayorga, and the question is, what, what have been the three events uh, of downtime and the uh, cyber resilience that you could endure? Well, we have high availability, 99.6%, and indeed we've had, if we've, if we've had downtime, it's when we uh, switch the version and until it gets stabilized. While stabilizing a new version, there, yes, we, we had that problem. The other thing is that always, we, we had a CAD certificate, and when it's due or when we have to update it, there we may have some downtime. And we haven't been hacked. We, uh, the, the solution is uh, extremely secure. We've never had any problems, and we've been using it for 12 years. Uh, I'd like to add to what he said. The ministry supports uh, all of this um, uh, IPv6 uh, for, uh, territorial as a service in the cloud. So all the infrastructure that we have is a public cloud, and we have all uh, the we are uh, assurance uh, of uh, uh, security, and we have a great availability because 8,300 domains. That, so we have to ensure that the business can go on. Yes, 8,300, uh, but we have, a, um, uh, we have a government uh, um, agencies and uh, presidency, and so if something happens, then um, everybody starts calling, even the president. So. That is why we try. Well, we are not perfect, but we have the highest availability possible of service. There are no more questions. Well, have a nice day, everybody.